It's stuck. It could be mice making that sound. It's blocked. It looks like a tiny hole. William Akers? I wonder if he's related to Jeff Akers. Howdy, Nancy. Any word from Tucker What's-His-Name? He hasn't been by to move that tree yet. I'll give him another call. But like I said, the man marches to the beat of another drummer. A very slow drummer. These so-called ghost dogs left very real paw prints. I saw some near the cemetery that's by the Malone house. Have you ever been there? <laughs> Can't say as I have. Poking around cemeteries ain't exactly a hobby with me. Does the name Waldo Matthias mean anything to you? Hmm, can't say as it does. I found this picture in Sally's house. Do you recognize anybody? Hmm, I'm guessing the guy's Mickey Malone, but I don't know who's that lady. Sounds like a case for our resident know-it-all Ranger Acres. I found an old newspaper in Sally's house that contained an article on Mickey Malone. It really got my curiosity going. What else can you tell me about him? Person you should talk to is Jeff Akers. He's got this historical museum thing going out at that ranger station of his. To make a long story short, I need some camouflage gear. Got some right over here. One size fits all. But I'm running kind of low on bait. So if you go out and get me, oh, say a dozen little critters, I'll give you the camos. You got a deal. So, what kind of bait do you need? Worms, spiders, beetles, grubs. Anything that wriggles on its belly will do. Just look under stuff. Rocks, logs, dead leaves. Should be able to find 12 in no time. Do I need some kind of permit? Things ain't quite that bad around here. At least not yet. Now, if Jeff Aker's daddy was still around, you might get arrested for cruelty to animals or some such nonsense. Joe Akers used to be the deputy sheriff. Real critter lover, that one was. Joe Akers is Jeff's father? That's right. Guess I'll see you later. Yo, la hee hoo.
You're back. What do you know about the cemetery behind the Malone house? People are buried there. Beyond that, what's to know? Are Malone's dogs buried there? That's the rumor. The inscription on one of the tombstones reads Waldo Matthias. Does that name ring any bells? Not in my steeple. I noticed you have a dog. <laughs> That's Yogi, who never goes out unless he's on a leash. Park rules. I couldn't help but notice that he's about the same size as those ghost dogs were. I hope you're not suggesting I trained Yogi to run around in the middle of the night barking and attacking houses. I found a newspaper dating back to 1927 in Sally's house. Since you're kind of an expert on the history of Moon Lake, do you mind if I ask you some questions about Mickey Malone? Not at all. The article mentioned that a man named William Akers used to work for Malone. Is he a relative of yours? No. Quite a coincidence, I'll admit, but no. I am in no way related to the head flunky of some two-bit gangster and his gang of thugs. I've been trying to take pictures of birds for this guy named Red Knot. Ever met him? Oh yes, the bird man. I'd stay away from him if I were you. Why? Is something wrong with him? He's a fanatic. He's got it in his head that Moon Lake would be the best bird-watching venue in the world except for one thing. Too many people. Believe me, if there was a way to get this park shut down and all the homes on the lake torn down, he'd do it in an instant. What happened to Akers and the rest of Malone's gang after he went to prison? <laughs> Fortunately for Moon Lake, they all left and went their separate ways. When and why was Malone arrested? I'm sorry, Ms. Drew. As usual, I'm a little pressed for time. If you have more questions, why don't you sit down at the computer and peruse the Moon Lake database of fascinating factoids that I've put together? I found this old picture in Sally's house. Do you know who these people are? The man is Mickey Malone, I know that. I'm guessing that this is his girlfriend, Vivian Burnett, I think her name was. And judging by the year of that brand new Ford in the background, I'd say the picture was taken in 1928. She was probably as familiar with Malone's house and his dogs as he was. Think there's any chance she's still alive? I'll tell you what, Miss Drew. Why don't I go through my files and see what I can dig up on this mystery woman? I'm a busy man, but like I always say, I'm here to serve. Have you gotten the results back from that water sample I left with you? I meant to call the Department of Health today for a status report, but frankly, I've been way too busy. Sounds like Moon Lake could use two rangers. If I were in charge of just ten more acres of parkland, they'd give me an assistant, and I could devote more time to the acquisition of more land and eventually put Moon Lake on the map as one of the biggest, most popular parks in the state. Then maybe these ghost dogs are a blessing in disguise. What do you mean? Well, if those dogs scare Sally away for good, other people are bound to think twice about buying the place. The bank will lower its price and you'll have your land. You're insinuating things again, Miss Drew. I'm sorry, I really am. It's just that Sally's my friend and I'd really like to find out why someone's doing this to her. Tell you what, if you're serious about making amends, there's some boxes by the computer labeled with dates. They're from the estate of a local history buff. She kept everything from newspaper clippings to old photos to recipes for apple crisp. She put everything in envelopes, then numbered them by year using Roman numerals. Just put the envelopes in order by year with the earliest date in front. Oh, and if you're rusty on Roman numerals, there's an entry on them in the computer. Okay, if I read what's in the envelopes? Don't go reading anything until you're through. Or take my word for it, you'll never get finished. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem.
Let's see. Jeff said the envelope with the earliest date goes down in the front of each box. Now that they're all sorted, I can do some reading. You're back. I finished putting all those envelopes in order. Excellent. Thank you, Miss Drew. And to show my gratitude, I've got something for you. It doesn't involve Roman numerals, does it? No, it's an honorary Junior Park Ranger pin. I keep them on hand so I can give them out to children whom I see demonstrating respect for park rules and regulations. A little bit of positive reinforcement. Unfortunately, I... Don't get to give them out that often. Oh, gee, thanks, Ranger Acres. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here.
Good news. I have information on your mystery woman. Thank you so much. Is she still alive? Her name these days is Vivian Whitmore. She lives in Las Vegas and her number is 702-555-9137. Sorry to bother you again, but did those results from the water test come in yet? Well, there's something here for you from the State Department of Health. Gosh, not only is the water bad, but it seems like the well may have been contaminated deliberately. I wouldn't go jumping to conclusions without proof, Ms. Drew. I'm sure there's a far less melodramatic explanation. Where's Yogi? In the run, out back. Even out of sight, he's under my full control, as park rules require. Thanks for all your help. Always a pleasure. Nice Junior Park Ranger pin. You must really be on Acre's good side. Guess I'll see you later. Yola hee hoo. Hey, Nancy, how's the bait finding coming along? Got him right here. Well, now, you done all right for a city gal. Here you go. Hope whatever you're hiding from won't catch you. <laughs> How you holding up? Guess I'll see you later. Always a pleasure. How's the bird watching coming along? I just can't seem to find a red-tailed hawk. Any suggestions? Well, there's gotta be lots around here. You haven't been going around wearing sunglasses and earmuffs, have you? No, Red, I haven't. 
Well, according to my bird map, they like to nest in the big tree that's just to the southwest of the Malone house. I suggest you park yourself nearby and wait. Bound to spot one sooner or later. See you in a while. Watch yourself out there. Well, I don't see any hawks, but this is probably the tree Red was talking about. At least it was the tree. That sounded like a hawk. I need a camera. There it is. I better get a picture before it takes off. Hey, what is that hawk standing on? Oh, that looks like a speaker. Uh. Huh? I better get out of here. <gasps> My arms and legs are tied. I can't move. At least I can kick. If I could just get that scythe down, I could use the blade to cut the rope around my wrists and free my hands. Just let this thing burn up. I've got to put it out. Fire! What in blazes happened? I saw the fire from my platform and came running. You weren't in there playing with matches, were you? I was looking at birds, and then I noticed something on the house, and the next thing I knew I was locked in the tool shed and somebody was setting it on fire. Whoa, you're not making much sense. Probably smoke inhalation or something. Come talk to me after you've cleaned yourself up and gotten some sleep. I need to tell you something. Somebody tried to kill you? I didn't say that. Somebody knocked you out, locked you in a shed, set it on fire, and you think they were, what, just pulling a prank? Wake up and smell the hostile vibes, Nancy. I guess it's just hard for me to believe that anybody would consider me to be that big a threat. I should have never let you stay there by yourself. Sally, I'm fine. I feel bad about your tool shed, though. Who cares about the shed? It was full of junk anyway. I'm glad to be rid of it. That's kind of the way Ranger Akers saw it, too. He showed up right after the bird watcher did and ticketed me for burning refuse in a manner that endangered park property. Ah, uh, that man is insufferable. Emily was nice, though. She came by right afterwards and wouldn't leave until I drank the tea she made for me. Look, Nancy, one more time. If you want to leave, just say the word and I'll come get you. Sally, one more time. I'm fine. Well, then promise me you'll be careful, okay? I promise. I'll be in touch. You better. If you're selling something, hang up right now. I got an air horn in my hand that could deafen a dinosaur, and I'm not afraid to use it. Oh, no, no, please. I'm not selling anything. Believe me. Is this Vivian Whitmore? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. You got exactly five seconds to state your business. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Moon Lake, Pennsylvania. I just wanted to ask you some questions. All right. The Moon Lake Park Ranger said you might call. But you have to talk fast. An old friend of mine is flying in today from Florida. And when I say old, I mean old, as in five years older than I am. Don't bother trying to do the math, sweet stuff. You'll hurt yourself. So, that ranger fella said you found an old picture of me. That's right. I found it in the cellar of Mickey Malone's old house on Moon Lake. Moon Lake. Talk about your fond memories. I had a lot of fun there. Although I wasn't anywhere near as wild as most young people were back then. But I think Mickey kind of respected me for that. 
I was his gal for five years. He always kept birch beer on tap at that speakeasy of his just for me. He had a speakeasy? Where? It was in the basement, right there at Moon Lake. Feds never knew about it, but everybody who was anybody on the East Coast back then, actors, musicians, bankers, politicians, they knew. You weren't big time unless you'd made at least one trip to Moon Lake Mickey's. That's weird. I'm staying in his old house on Moon Lake, and I haven't seen any sign of a speakeasy. Course you haven't. You're not supposed to. Only Mickey and Willie knew how to get into the speakeasy from the house. The rest of us had to go in and out the regular way, through the cemetery. The cemetery? There was a lock hidden in one of the tombstones in that little cemetery behind the house. You needed a key to unlock it, and when you did, stairs would appear that led to the speakeasy. Do you know anything about the safe that's in the cellar of his house at Moon Lake? You must be talking about the wall safe. That was Willie's. By Willie, I mean William Akers, one of the guys who worked for Mickey. I don't suppose you happen to know the combination. No one knew the combination, not even Mickey. Mostly because Willie was constantly changing it. He was a little paranoid and superstitious. Well, as I recall, he'd pick the most unlucky number he could think of and use that for the combination. He called it a reverse jinx. Unlucky number? Like what? Oh, like the date that something bad happened. Like when the stock market crashed, or when somebody died, or the address of a house that caught fire, or the phone number of the police, that sort of thing. Do you have any idea how to get into Malone's speakeasy from the house? I sure don't. That saloon was built using two main ingredients, concrete and secrecy. Mickey always bragged that nobody could get in unless he wanted them in, and I do believe he was right. But I'll tell you what, if you sent me that picture of me and Mickey, I'll send you my key. The key to the tombstone? You still have it? It's in the bottom of my jewelry box. I've come this close to throwing it out a hundred times, but it's so small and the memories it brings back are so big. Well, I just couldn't. As a joke, Mickey had a tombstone made with the name of this federal agent who had it out for him inscribed on it. That's the one the key unlocks. It's been fun talking to you. I'll be suing you.